is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. The Indians took a three-run lead, sparked by the right arm and bat of Corey Kluber. But the Fighting Phillies came right back with a right cross to the chin and then a knockout blow in the 11th against Cody Allen. The Tribe will try to bounce back early in support of Trevor Bauer, who makes his first start of the season next on Sports Time Ohio. Stop me if you've heard this one before. It's cloudy and cool. It seems like every night on this road trip, the weather is an instant replay. Once again, from the city of brotherly love, Citizens Bank Park, where tonight the Indians will try to even up this interleague series at a game apiece. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Not only is the weather following the tribe, but this bad kind of karma also, because their last three losses have all been in walk-off fashion. Well, they've been in every ball game except what happens if they get the last at bat. And in Minnesota, they hit a home run to win the first game on a walk-off. The second game comes on a base hit. And you're going to start the first game here in Philadelphia last night. A home run also walks it off. But as I said, they're in every game. They had the opportunity to win those games. And on the year, they are 4-5 and five in one-run games. So the three losses coming. Nine out of their 20 games have been one-run ball games. Yeah, four straight one-run games for the Indians, and the nine second most in the American League, only to Minnesota. We'll be back with all the play-by-play -play action as Trevor Bauer and the Indians try to even things up right here on Sports Time Ohio. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by WB Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
telling you. Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Another cool, chilly evening. A little better than it was last night, but not a whole lot better. Phillies take the field, and they'll be looking at a new look Indians lineup. Let's go down to Andre Nadu who has more on that. Well, with no DH and no Mike Napoli in the lineup tonight, Carlos Santana will bat fourth, and he will be in the cleanup spot where he'll be at fourth, and he'll play first base. Now, Terry Francona did think about possibly putting him at the leadoff spot, but with the pitcher batting ninth, he wanted to have balance in the lineup, so he went with this way. The funniest part about it, with Kip batting leadoff and Francisco Lindor batting second, Lindor had no idea he was batting second until about an hour ago. He looked at me and said, I'm just going to do what I always do and not worry about where they place me. The other thing is, Terry Francona feels like he has some trust with these three guys at the top of the order. He says, look, it worked last year with these two at the three at the top. Let's try it again now. Well, Jason Kipnis is riding an eight-game hitting streak, so why not? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Uh, put those three. We got the pitcher hitting. Not much you can do. It's different, and you know, you, you never know what you can learn from this. <laughs> they, they let off Santana. He surprised him in Detroit at the start of this trip. Kipnis did it very well last year, so we'll see. There's a look at the rest of the Indians starting lineup for Terry Francona, brought to you by Progressive with Tyler Naquin batting sixth. Behind Juan Uribe and then Roberto Perez. Lonnie Chisinau getting the start in right field and pitcher Trevor Bauer with one career hit will bat ninth. And our Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher for the Phils is going to be Jared Eikhoff, who is one and three this year, 407 earned run average. He has 28 strikeouts in his 24 and a third innings. He's never faced the Indians before. Supposedly has a very good curveball. He was rocked his last time out against the Brewers. He went five and a third, gave up nine hits and seven runs. He blew up in the sixth inning of that ball game where he gave up four consecutive hits to lead off the inning, and they had to take him out. So we're ready to go as Jason Kipnis stands in. Eikhoff's first pitch is a fastball in there for strike one. Eikhoff, a big guy, six foot four, about 250 pounds, 25 years old. Kipnis a swing and a miss and a low fastball. Looked like a little two seam sinker right there. And Kipnis puts that one in play. But it's fielded cleanly by Cesar Hernandez, and there's one away. Let's set that Phillies defense for you. A little different tonight than it was last night in the outfield. In left field, it's going to be rough. Herrera is in uh, center field. Borges is in right. It'll be Franco at third. Galvis is at short. Hernandez at second. Howard back at first. Rupp doing the catching. David Rackley will call the balls and strikes. The crew chief Larry Vanover is at first. Alfonso Marquez and Chris Guccione rounded out for the umpiring crew. Francisco Lindor takes a strike. He's gone seven out of 27 on this current road trip with five walks, four runs batted in, and he has scored four times. Down on the dirt. Two balls, one strike. Jared Eikhoff is one of six players the Phillies acquired from the Texas Rangers in the Cole Hamels trade last year at the trading deadline. In the outfield grass, Hernandez makes his second assist on the night. Two away. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Cut down on the strikeouts, and that has become a glaring concern, I think, for the Indians and for Trevor Bauer, location versus velocity. Yeah, the Indians uh, already this year in the 20 games, four times they have had 15 or more strikeouts in a game. Rick, they're averaging nine and a half strikeouts per game. Only the Houston Astros in all of baseball are averaging more yeah. strikeouts per game. And the Indians, and they're going up against 
tonight and tomorrow. The pitching staff who leads all of baseball in, in strikeouts. Yeah, right. Well, they proved it last night. 18 strikeouts in yeah. game one of this series. Phillies have 240 strikeouts as a pitching staff. I think there's only one squad in the American League that has more than 200, and that's the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. And nobody in the National League is even close to them. Brantley drives one toward left center field, but Ruff, the left fielder, slides over and makes the catch. And the Indians go one, two, three. The Phillies are coming to bat when we come back. Up under manager Pete McCannon. He's on your right taking a swig of water. Oduvo Herrera will lead it off. Freddie Galvis bats second. Michael Franco bats third. Then it's Ryan Howard, Cameron Ruff, and David Ruff. Cesar Hernandez, Jared Eikhoff, the pitcher, is batting eighth. And Peter Borges in right field will hit ninth. And Trevor Bauer will be our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher. His first start this year. He came on uh, in place of Carlos Carrasco in Detroit and he, he got the win went three and a third innings gave up four hits and a couple of runs so uh, he's out there probably between 80 and 90 pitches I would think today and hopefully he can throw a lot of strikes the deeper he can stay into this game the better it will be oh Duval Herrera leading off for Philadelphia he's reached base safely in 20 straight games. And he's got an 11 game hitting streak as he strokes a solid single to center field and the Phillies get their leadoff man aboard. Well didn't waste any time jumped on that first fastball so his hitting streak continues. There's a fastball right there to try and get ahead and he takes it right back up the middle. That's an 11 game hitting streak now for Herrera. It'll bring up Freddie Galvis, the switch hitter. He was 0 for 4 last night in the series opener. at the first pitch and a foul back. Trevor has made one start against uh, the Phillies. That comes back May 1st, 2013 at Progressive Field. He tossed five shutout innings, did get the win. Didn't have his control that day. He walked six and struck out five. But gave up only one hit. Hit pretty well. Deep to right. Chisholm back, and she is gone. 
Freddie Galvis with his third home run of the year and the Philadelphia Phillies jump out to an early 2 nothing lead. That looked like a change up to me. Uh, up and out over the plate. It was uh, let's check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. 87 miles an hour so that ball was running away. That's not a fastball. That's a changeup. And boy he got it, uh, the barrel to it and two quick swings and Philly's leading it two to nothing now for Galvis his third home run his eighth and ninth RBI. Michael Franco. Takes a fastball over the outside corner for strike one. Franco was one for five last night. And he shoots that one to first swatted by Santana into the mitt and a throw to first for out number one. Well way off the line at first base as you can see and Santana gets that ball and he swipes that glove downward. You'd rather see it go the other way down to up but he's able to snag it flip it over to Bauer. Here is last night's hero for Philly fans Ryan Howard his sixth career walk off home run. And that was only part of his strong night at the plate he went three for five including a double. Blistered fouled on the right side. You're going to see a little fastball down and in to the left hander and there was no doubt he knew it as soon as it left the bat. That was the walk off. He showed you in the open that's how the Indians have lost all three games on this road trip was the walk off fashion. Phillies meanwhile have won four in a row and seven of their last eight. The surprising team to many at three games over the 500 mark as we mark as we close out the first month of the season many felt that Philadelphia was sort of building toward the future. Swing and a miss at a good curveball and Bauer strikes him out two away. Let's check out the uh, drive defense brought to you by Jeep. Behind Bauer this evening, it's going to be Brantley in left, Naquin in center, Chisholm Hall in right, Uribe at third, Lindor at short, Kipnis is at second, Santana at first with Perez doing the catching. Cameron Rupp, the Phillies catcher, will step in here, batting fifth tonight. And off to a strong start. Takes a healthy hack. And that fastball finds the strike zone. Get him to offer at it. It's quite a catching combination the Phillies have with Cameron Rupp, who is 27, and the wise veteran Carlos Ruiz, who's 37. But between the two of them, they've almost equally handed the duties. This is uh, Rupp's 14th game, while Ruiz has played in 10. Yeah, you got to rest the the old man. Hit hard. Big hop though for Kipnis. He spins around and throws him out. And the inning is over. But Freddie Galvis hits his third home run of the year, and the Phillies are out to a 2 0 lead.
at Bad App. Stay connected all season long with radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Carlos Santana in the cleanup spot tonight. But leading off here in inning number two. It's been a pretty good road trip for Santana. Ten hits, 26 at bats. Of the ten hits, four doubles and a homer, so half his hits have gone for extra bases. This is a big bouncer for Ryan Howard, and on the flip, one away. Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. And this Philadelphia Phillies pitching staff during their four game winning streak has posted a 142 earn run average. Yeah, I mean, they're off to a really good start. And it's all been about their pitching because offensively they're not, you know, that much of an offensive club. But they have three starters, 25 years or younger, with nine or more strikeouts and no walks in a game this year. And this is one of them. Eikhoff. Aaron Nola has done it this year, and the guy we're going to see tomorrow, Vincent Velasquez. Just a bit outside, 2 0. Oh, and here is the new, improved, patient Juan Arebe. <laughs> He's already walked six times in his last 10 games. And it's 3 0 oh here. Now maybe it's coincidence but over those last 10 games in which he's drawn the six walks he also has 10 hits. As they say a leopard doesn't change his spots but. Maybe a rebate as all hitters just goes through periods oh. where he's a little more patient I'm sometimes sure. when he can't. There, yeah it goes up and down it seems like when you're in a slump you're always hitting from an 0 2 count. Oh, he hit that right on the screws, but right at Franco, who throws him out, and there are two down. Well, four of the first five outs have been on the ground, so he's got a two-seamer, a fastball. I haven't really seen the curveball yet, and they they rave about his curveball. That's his big pitch. Well, maybe he's saving it for second time yeah. through. He's getting his ground ball outs early. Here is Tyler Naquin. Naquin in his rookie campaign off to a terrific start his first month of the season. Very good indeed a 325 average. Tyler Naquin six hits in his last 18 in bats a couple of doubles and four runs scored. Even though they're in different leagues it's kind of a neat matchup to the game's younger players Naquin just turned 25 and. Eikhoff at 25 years old. The way trades happen in baseball. Could uh, certainly end up in the same league. You never know. Face each other for a long time. Well, he came up with Texas as you mentioned. He yeah. came over here in the Cole Hamels trade. The guy tomorrow came from Houston in the Giles trade. Uh, that's starting. Velasquez. So Philadelphia made some trades right now that. You know, look promising with their pitching. Eikhoff's 2 2. There's the curveball. There's the first one I've seen. But it was down and in. 
I read somewhere where he says, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep going to that curveball because when I if I get beat with it, I can live with it because yep. he feels that's his best pitch. Ground ball up the middle and it's through and Tyler Naquin continues his tear had his hitting streak stopped yeah. last night only because he was limited to one pinch hit appearance late in the ball game. He's hung in there. He's done a, a, a nice job not getting a, a start every day. And again it, it's much like what the Indians did last night a two out base hit. So here we go but Naquin on first base he gets the single. Man a hit in nine of his last ten now. Up comes Roberto Perez and Perez seeking his first hit of the year. He's 0 for 6, but in 12 plate appearances, he's already drawn six walks. I think that's got to be one of the hardest things to do when you're not playing a lot and well, you only have 12 plate appearances to, to get six walks out of that. He's been patient. You know, he's not chasing and sometimes swinging at everything well, that came I, near I, me. Th that's what I was going to say. There's one of two ways to go about it. You know, you can get up there and swing at every first pitch and try and stay aggressive. Or he was patient last year, too, and, yep. and drew a lot of walks. So the more pitches you get to see when you're not playing a lot, I think the better off you are. But it's hard to keep your strike zone intact when you're not seeing game action. But where were we in Detroit on this trip? Didn't he have three walks in the game? Yeah. It was like holy smokes. I just always remember our buddy John McDonald saying, you know, when you don't play a lot, you go up there, you want to be, you want to, you know, be aggressive. And he said, I, I remember in the rare times you'd be on the bench and you get a pinch hit appearance. And he said, I'd go up there and the first Look pitch is a fastball at the knees outside corner, right. strike one, then a slider on the black, strike two, and then a splitter in the dirt. And I'm already going back to the <laughs> dugout going, what happened? I know. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, look at it, it's 2 and 0 already. Yeah. He's he's been throwing strikes all night long. This guy's a ball machine. Naquin a modest lead at first base. And Perez on the 2 0 pitch bloops it toward right field and fall. it is going to be caught. Wow. What a fine running catch by Cesar Hernandez. And that will end the inning. All out sprinting grab right on the line just inside fair territory. Cesar Hernandez terrific play to end that inning for the Phillies on defense and look at the uh, the veteran Larry Bowen yeah. to talk to Freddie Galvis probably tell him about when he used to hit home runs at old <laughs> veteran stadium. No, he was not a home <laughs> run hitter by any means. He might have run into one here or there maybe. 
Maybe but he was a fiery Parker. player. Was there anybody who played with more? No, he had passion. He was tough and played with a lot of passion. Darren Ruff strokes one to left center. That's in the gap. It's going to go all the way to the wall deep into the triangle. And Ruff in the second base with a double. Well, it's the second guy that, that's jumped on Trevor Bauer on the first pitch fastball. So you better start locating him a little better. That one again is right down the middle. Same as the leadoff hitter Herrera jumped on it. So back to back innings they have the leadoff man aboard this time it's a double for Ruff his second double of the year. And now Cesar Hernandez. That was a nice running catch he made to end the inning. You know infielders. They use that little glove and there's not much room for error. He I mean was stretched to the max on the dead run. And it went just right into the edge of the glove. Strike to the inside corner. Just missed inside. Having a good at bat here. Well, let's check, check it out. Here's the catch ending the inning. And then it's a long way. And that was a fair ball. That took a hit away from. Perez and he's lucky he had that much room to stop in most ballparks he would have been into the seats a lot earlier. Power making some good pitches on the inside part of the plate making him use those hands he's getting inside on him. Two two. That's hit hard to deep center back is Naquin and he'll run it down. Tagging up is rough and he'll make it to third base. Well he got his job done. He got a ball out over the plate a little bit and gave him some swinging room so he's able to get the man to third base but now you're. Oh that's right the pitchers up here I forgot in the eighth hole. So you can go at him and look for the strikeout but a good job by Hernandez getting him over. Andre uh, not downstairs watching this one from just outside the Indians dugout as the tribe brings the infield in. What's the key for Bauer tonight from what you understand? The key that we've been told is he's got to get the fastball inside and locate it better. Already had some problems with that early in this contest. Also 85 to 90 pitches is what's expected tonight for him to guys. Uh, but Terry Francona said it's about the stress of the innings. Yeah. He says he can get up to 100 if there's not stressful innings. If they are they're going to have to do something quick. Gotcha. Well it all depends too in this league. When he's got a hit, if you're losing around that fifth inning and you come down to his spot in the lineup, then they pinch hit for him and they go to the bullpen. So. You can see right there, Jared Eikhoff again. He's no slouch. He put a good charge, in, though it was foul into that first pitch. Well, oh and boy. now he's got a base hit, and he's got his second RBI on the year. How about him? And the Phillies' lead is three to nothing. He was hitting 250. He was two for eight coming into this ball game, but boy, two good swings took it right back up the middle. Again, let's look. They want it inside, and, and it's Trevor's have a tough time getting it in. He did a couple of times to uh, Hernandez, but Hernandez uh, one leaked out over the plate, and he moved his runner. This time, the pitcher gets a base hit up the middle on a ball away. Eikhoff goes to the jacket on a cool night, 58 at game time. Peter Borges. And he looks at a fastball strike go over the outside corner. Now we mentioned last night that Pete McCann the manager for the Phillies. He uh, started to hit his pitcher in that number eight hole. They had won now seven out of their last eight since that's happened. But we also told you last night that uh, Herrera in the leadoff spot had a lot to do with it not just because the pitchers hitting eight. But yeah, he's just, got an 11 game hitting streak so that right. helps to get you jump started and he's walking a lot. 
And they have pitched a few shutouts. They shut out the Nationals before they came home here on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, or was it Wednesday and Thursday? Two straight days. There's the swing and a miss at the curveball. Bauer strikes him out. And there are two down here in the second inning. Now you're going to see that's the first pitch of the game that stayed middle. It was a base hit. There's the home run. It was a changeup away. Now, leading off this inning, the double by Ruff. That was a double. And there's the flyout where the ball leaked back out over home plate. So they're getting some pretty good swing in room right now. He's going to have to go. You can see he's, yeah. he's frustrated with himself because he wants to throw it in there. He just can't get it in there. Even if you've got to move their feet and get them off the plate and throw it for a ball, he's going to have to find that release point that's going to do that or they're going to continue to hit him. Oduval Herrera looks at a big curveball and it drops over the outside corner for strike one. He doesn't seem pleased with Dave Rackley's decision behind the plate. During his streak in which he's reached base 20 straight games. Now 21 if you include tonight. His on base percentage is almost 500. How's that? Now this is a guy that never walked a lot last year and they asked him you know we'd like you to get a little more patient. And a lot of times when you ask a hitter to do that they go from one extreme to the other. But this guy has incorporated it pretty well in one offseason for being a young player. Popped him up left field and Brantley is there. And the inning is over. But the pitcher Jared Eikhoff helps himself out with an RBI single. 3 0 Philadelphia. National League cities means Indians pitchers get the hit and last year Trevor Bauer really entertained us over in Pittsburgh he imitated both <laughs> Mike Avilas Ryan Rayburn even gave us a little Jason Kipnis but the most impressive thing was at Wrigley Field in Chicago he got a base hit off Jake Arrieta yeah go figure huh has another hit pitcher had a hit off Arrieta do you think uh, I don't know I, my guess would be no because no. <laughs> I mean very few hitters get hits That's off right. Arietta, but uh, that'd be something to remember keep that footage Trevor wouldn't tip his hand as to what we might see this year in interleague play but well, we'll certainly if you get a base runner we're going to see a bunt I can yeah that's a good that. point yeah well let's see if Lonnie Chisnall can get himself aboard two for 18 to start out the year Hit hard down the left field line. That's a fair ball and into the corner it goes. And Lonnie Chisinau into second base 
with a double. Yeah, the boy line go the other way. So he's got a single, a double, and a triple in his first three hits on the year. Well, and here we're going to see a bunt by Bauer. And here comes Chisholm. He's not going to spot that sinker. Lonnie's a good low ball hitter, and he stayed on that baseball, takes it the other way. So he'll get his first double of the year, just his third hit. But now in scoring position, I'd love to see this get him over and get him in. So now to, you want to see Bauer do his best Rod Carew impersonation. Bingo, yes. Whatever it takes to get him over. Not that the Phillies really needed to know what Bauer was going to be doing there, but. <laughs> and a foul right back off the catcher. You know, we uh, last night, Kluber had an opportunity. He, uh, you know, he hit a double. Yeah, you got to keep your bat out in front, Trevor. Don't be pushing down on it. You push down on it, you'll never get the ball down on the ground. Well, that's where Kluber did a nice job last night. He did a he beautiful really broke job. That down I was well. going to say he he did a, a wonderful job just putting it down. And you know, just keep it out in front of you, the bat. There you go. There you go. Look to third, but they'll take the easy out you at know, first. Anytime they the pitchers have an opportunity to do something and they do it. That's a great job because they don't practice it. Right. So it's a nice sacrifice. Well done. And let's uh, let's hope they can help. Uh, he can help his own cause. Our great clip of the game from last night. Jason Kipnis. Who over his last 11 interleague games. is batting 426. With 10 extra base hits. That one a home run last night, a two run smash. Picked down a break and pulled down in the zone that he gave for right. And it wasn't carrying last night either, the ball. Remember, a couple of them were knocked down early in the contest. There's a curveball in for a strike. Our Kia in the driver's seat shows you that over the last two seasons in interleague action, Getting us right there among the best in baseball. And that pitch, a fastball in, moves him back. Ben Zobrist yeah, at the head of the glass. That's beautiful. Well, a ground ball, and you can get the runner in. So there you go. Good fastball, and he drills it to deep left field. Back is rough and makes a catch. Oh, he slammed into the wall and hung on, taking a double away from Jason Kipnis. But he will not rob him of an RBI as Chisinau comes home to score. The Indians are on the board, and it's a 3-1 to one ball game. There you go. That's good. It was a nice running catcher. Kipnis would have had a double. He had to leap as he was on the warning track, so he hit that ball well the other way. A nice catch by Ruff, but you still get the sacrifice fly. You still get on the board. So job well done. Now it's a three to one game. For Kipnis, that's a dozen runs batted in so far this year. And Francisco Lindor bats with the bases empty and two down. Fastball called a strike. Generous. And a big curveball is swung on and missed. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Well, I can't believe he got out of the way of that one. Just had to spin in the direction it was coming, and it was just underneath his arms. Watch how close this is. I mean, almost caught some jersey. That curveball fought off by Lindor, and that's doing something because in his first 11 career starts, Jared Eikhoff had given up two extra base hits when he threw his curveball. Two. Yeah, that's his. Uh, that's his pitch. But then in his last start, Milwaukee got him. They touched him up for seven runs on nine hits and five and a third included in that. A Ryan Braun home run hit on the curveball. But as you pointed out, Eikhoff said afterwards, if I, if I get beat with my curveball, I'll live with it. 
That's a tough one to get into the air. They're hitting the top part of the baseball, that's for sure. Indians get on the board, though, as Chisholm Hall doubles, and Kipnis brings them home. Stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday evening. Indians down three to one here as we go to the bottom of the third. Freddie Galvis will lead it off. He hit a two run homer in the first inning. He got on a high changeup. Coming right back inside there. That's where he wanted to pitch a lot of the guys earlier in the game. He just hasn't been able to get it in there quite yet. But there's a good start. Yeah, boy. Top foul over toward the Phillies dugout. Well, you, you look at Freddie Galvis and Cesar Hernandez, and you wonder do they have the abilities to be the everyday keystone combination for a long period of time? Galvis cannot make contact there. Third strikeout for Trevor Bauer. I mean, those two took over as the Keystone combo on the heels of the Chase Utley Jimmy Rollins era, right. in which they teamed up together for 10 consecutive seasons as the second baseman yeah. shortstop. But well, that's pretty rare. It is rare. The first ones that come to mind are Trammell and Whitaker for me in the American League. But yeah, Rollins and, and Utley, and towards the end, Utley was hurt a lot. Yeah. With some leg issues and things like that. But. Uh, and, Great tandem here for uh, quite a long time, as you say. I mean, those guys certainly aren't going to be like them. They're not going to be able to replace them, but they certainly they are going to get a chance. Well, in the mid 90s, you had uh, Mickey Morandini, who was the second baseman. He's now the first base coach on this Phillies ball club and he teamed up for a number of years with uh, the Kevin Stocker the shortstop they were one two three four five they had five huh, five year run together foul high and to the right side and just out of play now Larry Bow was a long time shortstop for the Phillies but he went through a lot of different second, second base yeah Bo was here for forever. Denny Doyle was here. The 
Would that have been Dave Cash at second base in the mid yes, 70s? Yes, yes, yes. And then Manny Trio. Uh huh. And then Manny came over to Cleveland. Yeah. In '82, I believe. There's Larry Bowen. Larry Bowen managed here. Yeah. He's been around. He's been on MLB channel. He's been around baseball a long time. Good baseball guy. I think he might have even coached on Charlie Manuel's staff at one time. Yeah. He's yes. Reached for it. Weakly tapped to short. Lindor. Low throw in Santana. Nice, nice job to pick it up. Great pick. Very nice pick. Soft hands over there, and that ball short hopped him. And see, Francisco had to lay back on it because he didn't hit it that hard, and then he realized I got to get something on it. He didn't really use his legs, but Santana helps him out on the, on the pick right there, and it's no big deal. Good job. Way to go. Phillies are contemplating a challenge, but I, that's pretty clear to me that he was out. Well, it's, I don't even think twice about that. Pete McCannon agrees. I think. I think Pete might have been working off Franco, who just, for whatever reason, felt like he had beaten the play at first base, but that was not the case. Here's Ryan Howard, our Levin Furniture player profile. The veteran on this Phillies ball club, and he's all over the record book. Yeah, well, it was his sixth walk off in his career last night. Swung on and missed. He's second in Phillies history in home runs with 362. That's the most fine left handed hitter. But he's still 186 shy of Mike Schmidt. Yeah, I saw Big Mike in the house tonight. I still remember. I think, I think Mike Schmidt hit number 500. Against the Pirates. I think you're right. Because Harry Callis had that great call. What was it, Michael Jack? Michael Jack yeah. Schmidt, yeah, yeah, there he is. The Hall of Famer's number 20 immortalized here in Philadelphia. And, and you know, I, I never realized watching him as a kid all these years that he was from Ohio. Uh huh. Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. 3 1, hit hard and almost got Morandini. Heads up, Nick. That was almost a shin burner. He was able to move the feet and get out of the way. Yeah, that's that's one you, he's lucky to get out of the way. It's look at it's it's got radar, man. It was beeping all the way down past him. Now Bowers 3-2. Strike three called and the inning is over. Howard doesn't like it, but Trevor Bauer has his fourth strikeout and the Phillies go one, two, three.
Bank Kids tickets start at just $10 for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket. They are located in the family deck out of Progressive Field, home to the expanded Kids Clubhouse. Kids tickets only available at Indians.com. And we will return home after tomorrow. Monday will be off. We will take on the Tigers Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the Kansas City Royals over the weekend. Michael Brantley takes the strike leading off here in the fourth. Fly to left is only time up. Change up there that Brantley just spit on. This is about as straight up as you're going to see anybody play any hitter with Brantley up there. The outfield straight away. There's no shift. There's no three men over there. Uh, this is about as honest as you're going to see all year with any hitter. Inside, keeping them honest. Took the sting out of the bat with a good curveball. On April 18th, Michael Jack Schmidt. There it is. The 500th career home run at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. And what a celebration for him. Yeah. yeah, he was a tremendous third baseman as well. Juan Samuel. I see Steve Bedrosian. Yeah, he was a, you're right, complete player. He just happened to hit a lot of home runs. There he is. Yes, he's in the house tonight doing a little television for the Phillies. Carlos Santana grounded out his first uh, only time up. mentioned last year Jared Eikhoff came to the Phillies from the Rangers organization in that massive haul for Cole Hamels and he made his uh, major league debut last year with Philadelphia Santana with a smash up the middle but Freddie Galvis with the shift on is right there to throw him out well, that's hitting into the teeth of the defense right there. Two away. He uh, in his major league debut against the Marlins, he threw six shutout innings, and he had a two-run single. And then later that season, you remember we briefly had Jeff Francoeur with right. the Indians in spring training one year. He shut out the Mets, the eventual National League champion Mets. And after the game, Jeff Francoeur said, "Quote: I've got a man crush." He said if none of the other guys in this trade pan out he's worth it alone. No kidding. So just from the little bit that we got to know Jeff Frank or to hear that kind of a quote that tells you this guy right here might be pretty it special. Could be for the real deal. Yeah. yeah. Well when you make deals and you send out your scouts and Philadelphia has some veteran scouts we know them. Yeah. And know them very well. Uh, they. Do their homework. And when you give up a guy like Cole Hamels, remember it took him a while to trade him. They found they finally found the right package. And when you give up somebody that good, 
Hopefully you get something very good in return. I think I'm noticing tonight, Rick, with Eikhoff, his fastball, it's never been in the middle of the plate, or very rarely has it been. And he has two different styles, a four and two yep. seam. And then he mixes in that nice slow hook. He has a changeup. But uh, you say you stay out of it. That's pretty good uh, philosophy for all pitchers. Pitch on the edges, the the, the outer three inches uh, of the outside part of the plate and off, and same with the inside. Stay away from those seven or eight or nine inches in the middle part of the plate. You can see Uribe just trying to flick it and stay alive. Well, we've seen a lot of swings like that tonight so far. You know, he's taking a lot of sting out of the bat, keeping them off balance, and that's the object and the key to pitching. Tribe has two hits so far tonight. The leadoff double by Chisholm Hall led to their only run last inning. Oh, nice play. And Uribe goes down hack, and that's the first strikeout tonight for Jared Eikhoff. Indians go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the fourth, 3 1, Philadelphia. Injury report, as always, brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Houston Street down for the Angels with a left oblique. Shane Green, starter for the Tigers, has a blister problem. In fact, I think that popped up originally when he's facing the Indians. Remember the blood we saw yeah. in the baseball we showed? Absolutely, it did. And Miguel Montero dealing with a back problem for the Cubs. So, bottom of the fourth, and Trevor Bauer will go at the five, six, and seven hitters in the Phillies lineup. Cameron Rupp, the catcher, to lead it off. And a fastball strike to the outside corner. Last year, Cameron Rupp made the opening day roster for the Phillies. First time in his career he'd done that. Third round pick six years ago by the Phillies. And Bauer just missing outside. The center field and Tyler Naquin will put it away one down. Well, come on out to Progressive Field next weekend. It'll be a week from uh, yesterday. The Indians are going to host the world champion Kansas City Royals for the first time this year. Hosmer, Perez, Kane, the rest of the Royals will come into Cleveland. It'll be a big series over the weekend for the Indians. Go to Indians.com and get your tickets.
Darren Ruff. Born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska. Still makes his home there. That ball game last night, talking about the Royals, uh, won nothing in Seattle last night. King Felix beat him. And, uh, and Seattle had one hit. It was a home run, and it was the ball game. That was it. So rare. I mean, I don't know that there was ever a time, maybe in the dead ball era, where there were a lot of one nothing games. You just don't see many. No, you don't. Nice breaking ball to get the count back to even. Oakland did beat Houston two to nothing earlier today, though. The Astros really struggled. Boy, they are. I told you before, Houston began the day averaging more strikeouts per game than the Indians, better than ten. Well, you know they. That was their philosophy last year. They didn't care. Yeah. But they have to hit home runs. You know, if, the, if you don't score and you're not hitting homers at a at a pretty good clip, then you, you have to put the ball in play and move runners. But after everything that went so well for them a year ago, to be sitting here at the end of April, seven and seventeen. Yeah. They've got to really be wondering: is is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Well. Right back up the middle, off Bauer, Lindor. Bare hand grab and throw, and he got him! Oh, Francisco Lindor, never say die! A terrific effort, grabbing the carom off the glove of Bauer to get him for out number two. Boy, this guy, on a nightly basis, does he make great play after great play. He had to readjust his route. He goes in there with the bare hand. He's got to throw it on the ground. And it looked like they had him. It looked like they had him. They can't uh, challenge that. There's the bounce into the glove before that foot hits the base. And what a play. Something special every night. Cesar Hernandez. When I was over there talking to some of the Phillies coaches, Boa asked me about him. Did today. he? Yeah, he sure did. He said, How's your shortstop? <laughs> Pretty good, isn't he? I said, you're darn right. You ought to see him play. And he's getting a good luck. It doesn't take long for baseball people to realize when you see some talent come around. They want to get an eyeful, too. Bowers, two-strike pitch. And just a little bit low. You know, Rick, I often wonder too, a guy like Bowler, for example, or take your pick of any of those shortstops that played through the 70s and 80s primarily on AstroTurf. Right. How much different was the game? Well, the game for them. Was, well, you know, these fields now, I gotta tell you, are a lot of bad bounces. Well, but they're quick. The grass is cut, it's trimmed, it's manicured, it's beautiful. So it's quicker, but not as quick as the AstroTurf used to be because it, when it was wet and it was on that stuff, Ooh. it would it would like hydroplane. Yeah. It'd come at you faster. But you know, back in the old days of the, the grass, they used to tailor it to pitchers. It's the first walk issued by Bauer. He's right. upset with himself. He had him down 0 2 and he wanted to he wanted to put him away. He couldn't do it because now you gotta face the pitch and he wanted him to lead off next inning. First walk in the game for that matter. And Jared Eikhoff drove uh, drove in a run his first time up. Yeah, on the rare occasions that you played on AstroTurf, because it seemed like in the 70s and 80s, more, more of the National was, League parks more had of it. Was right. I just think for guys like Boa and, and the players of that era, the physical toll, just running and jumping yeah, on and your knees diving and on, on your it. back. Yeah, it was a little. It was a lot more difficult. Chopped to third, a rebate. We'll go the long way. And perfect throw ends the inning. Francisco Lindor add one more to the highlight reel as he picks up the carom and throws out rough through four Phillies lead it three to one.
for the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. And by T-Mobile, get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. Three-one Philadelphia as we go to the fifth inning here at Citizens Bank Park. Still cool, but much better than last. Last night was just chilly. Yeah, this is not bad. Yes, it is. It's much better tonight. I don't know if that wind seemed like it was blowing in a little bit more. This is much more comfortable. Tyler Naquin, Roberto Perez, Lonnie Chisenhall do up for Cleveland. And that ball is crushed by Tyler Naquin, and it is off the wall. Naquin around second. Burning for third, he'll go in easily with a stand-up leadoff triple. Well, I tell you what, Herrera almost made a sensational catch. They're checking on him to make sure he's okay because he banged into the wall pretty hard. But this ball really tattooed by Tyler Naquin. Well, look how close Herrera comes to making the play. Just missed it, I think. Yeah, he, he had a good run at it. He gets over there. He knew well. He knew he was getting close, so yeah. he he felt that wall was coming. But Naquin hit a low fastball and hit it a long way, and he was in good stride. That'll be his uh, second triple. So that's a leadoff triple, looking good right now. I didn't think off the bat anyone had a chance at that ball, and Herrera came close. But now Tyler, 90 feet away, and Roberto Perez, the tying run at the plate, popped up on the infield his first time up. Speed pitch in there for a strike. Infield back, they'll concede the run if Perez can just put one in play here on the ground. Or drive one to the outfield. But that patient approach puts him in a good hitter's count now. Patient approach, and you know, you, you're looking for a ball you can hit in the air, and he's been throwing that curve ball. It's a tough pitch to get up in the air. So he has patience, and he has the count in his favor as well. Fastball drilled Beautiful. to center field. Plenty deep enough. Well done. And Herrera, just shy of the warning track, makes the catch. And the Indians with their second sack fly of the night close to within a run as Perez gets RBI number one and it's a 3-2 ball game. Well that's you know that's second as you say that's 10 on the year they lead the league and sacrifice flies and that one gets them just one run closer makes it a one run ball game three to two now. Brings up Lonnie Chisenhall who doubled down the left field line his first time up. And came around to score the Indians first run. Curveball down in the dirt. Well, season tickets offer the best perks, including savings and access to tribe rewards. Today's tribe rewards TV code is Lonnie. Just visit Indians.com season tickets for complete details. There's the fastball inside, and he's done a pretty effective job of either painting the outside corner or keeping the hitter honest by straightening him up coming in off the plate, as yes. you said. Yeah, you spin him out of that toe hold. Lonnie wraps one up the middle. It's knocked down by Ikov, but no play, and Chisenhall has his second hit of the night.
All right, so Trevor Bowers coming up, presumably a sacrifice situation again, even with one out here. But let's go down to Andre with more on Bowers batting. La last time up, you guys both mentioned that Bauer got a hit off Jake Arietta 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 last year from Chicago. Only three other pitchers were able to do that last year. Lance Lynn, John Lackey, and DeGrom from the Mets were the only other guys to get hits off of him last season. So that's a there you pretty. Go. There was other yeah. pitchers you asked. Yes, okay. just pitchers that were able to get hits off of him. Well, that's that surprises me, but he, I guess you know he goes up there and he's going to throw you a fastball if you're a pitcher. Somebody's got to get lucky. Jacob Degrom is the last pitcher to get a hit off Jake Arrieta. Not many human beings have been able to get hits off him this year. Bauer squares and fouls it back over the screen. Went off the mask of the helmet, I think, of uh, Rupp behind the plate. Second time he's been hit by a, a, a bunt attempt by Bauer. Remember the first time up, Trevor fouled the first bunt opportunity and it nailed Rupp in the mask. And then the second chance, he put it down nicely. I was just thinking that to myself. I was like, you know what? He throw him a curveball here, knowing he's going to be bunting. Yeah, but it's a good take. You have to make sure you bunt strikes. That's the one thing you do. And if you're you're not certain up there, some some guys try to bunt everything that's thrown. Right, especially thinking yeah. the guy that doesn't bunt a lot, American, right. you know, American League hitter. Yeah, you have to make sure it's in the zone. All right, I'll get one more crack at it. It may take you three. He did it the first time, get it done again, even though there is one out. Move that guy in the scoring position if possible. Yeah, take the call third that time. He threw him a good third ball for a strike. Second strikeout of the night for Eikhoff, and there are two down in the inning. Well, the first one he laid off, he was going to lay off this one. But no, that caught the knees. It had the plate. Gotcha. He threw him a better one. Two down, top of the order. Here's Jason Kipnis. Kipnis drove in a run with a sack fly his last time up, and it was a ball that was hit hard. Ruff went all the way to the wall to make the catch on Kipnis. And not that Jason's off to a slow start by any means, but when he starts getting really locked in and really hot, he starts hitting the ball to left and left center field with power. Well, uh, he drives it. Yeah, yep. like he did in that at bat. Mm -hmm. He drove the ball to left center field in that at bat. That's what he did all month of last uh, last year, the month of May. Yeah. Well, tomorrow's May Day. Uh, I hear you. Indians have been involved in four straight one run games so no surprise this one's three two here in the fifth. Well you're going to play a lot of one run games when you're, you live on pitching and your hitting is you know. You're not scoring a lot of runs Phillies like that Minnesota has been like that. Kipnis clobbers one fouled on the right field line boy for a moment I thought that had a chance to be fair and down into the corner. That Instead, was his curveball down on the count now. He left this one upstairs a little bit. And Kip was just a hair out in front of it, but hit it okay. You can see him checking his bat. It might have been a little off the end. That's how slow that curveball is. That's why you, you get out and you beat it to the ground, but he left that one up. Fastball by Ikov fouled away. It stays one ball, two strikes.
there's no really regularity to interleague play as far as when you go to National League cities and when they come to your place. Bottom line is this has not been a kind stop for Cleveland. They've lost five out of six uh -huh. in Philadelphia. In the dirt and down to second in the scoring position is Lonnie Chisholm with the stolen base. Well that's why you run in that situation. You're hoping you get the curveball. They got it. It was down in the in the dirt. Nothing that you could do is the catcher. So what you're doing uh, in that one two count. You're protecting Kipnis as the hitter. If he steals a bag and it's a ball, bingo. He's in scoring position of base that scores a run. So you take that chance and he stole it easily. Pitch, pick the right pitch. Feels like this is the first inning in which Eikhoff's really had to work at all. He's been on cruise control most of the game. And again as Andre alluded to earlier in the game it's not necessarily just the pitch count not the total number of pitches but how you get to those pitches and Eikhoff even though he hasn't maybe thrown a lot of pitches in this inning they've all been kind of high stress because you had the leadoff triple everything since then he's had to work hard for. Well, anytime you can keep the pressure on the defense and you have runners in scoring position, a pitcher's going to run into that a couple times during the game. He's going to have to get some big outs. And if they breeze through it and they're pitching out of the full windup a lot, and then one time they get a two out base hit, if there's not much stress in there, is, is right. When you keep guys in scoring position, that's what really makes them work and gets them tired. Pull just foul. Then, uh, he's flirting with it, isn't he? Well, he's putting up a good at bat. You know, you lay off the high fastballs. The Indians have been swinging at a lot of high fastballs recently. The series in Minnesota and last night, they were swinging through them. This guy make him get the ball down. Great. Line drive, base hit, left center field. And Jason Kipnis has tied the game. With a clutch two out RBI single. Yeah, how good was that at bat? He got a pitch down to his liking. So the stolen base pays off. Kipnis has a great at bat. They put two on the board in the inning and tie the game up. Look at that fastball down. That's right up his alley. And look at look at Kip go the other way with it. Great hitting. So we got a new ball game. Bowers got new life. Bob McClure going out. To talk with the young starter Jared Eikhoff as Jason Kipnis extends his hitting streak to nine games and in his last 12 interleague games now he has 12 runs batted in to go along with a slew of hits batting average coming in in his last 11 interleague games was well over 400. So Francisco Lindor 0 for 2 on the night. We'll step in here with Jason Kipnis the go ahead run. Now down at first. Three hits in the inning for the Indians they had two in the first four innings of the game. Well we told you when the Brewers got him the last time it was four consecutive hits in the sixth inning after his team came up and gave him a, a lead. And the strange thing about that Rick is that in his two previous starts Eikhoff had gone 14 innings allowed two runs and struck out 18 batters. Yeah. Well, he hasn't walked anybody tonight. No, nope. he has two strikeouts. That's it. And they've been able to put the ball in play. Yeah, if you include the two sacrifice, my bigger problem. You got one sacrifice bunt down tonight. 
One sack bunt, two sack flies. So eight ground ball outs. It's been his primary method tonight. But I would say this is a this is a team, the Indians, they have to walk. When teams you know, walk them, they it helps them out. It gives them extra base runners. Because there's times where they, they score without maybe a hit or one hit in the inning and then sacrifice by you move a runner, you get him in. That's how they have to play. Lindor shoots one up the gut, and that's through. And Kipnis will go all the way to third. So the tribe keeping the pressure on Jared Eikhoff, who's having a tough time getting himself out of the inning. Fourth well, hit of the inning went right back up the middle. Yeah, with two outs, Kipnis off and running, so he's going to continue to go to third base. Now you've got Brantley up at the plate, and if you're Lindor, you, you leave him that hole between first and second until he gets the two strikes. And then you may want to try and run when you think he's going to throw that breaking ball if it gets to two strikes. Michael Brantley, who led baseball last year with 45 doubles. 0 for 2 on the night. Oh, it was very close. Lindor looked like he lost his footing trying to get back to the bag or just maybe spun his wheels a little bit. Yeah, that looked like that right foot just didn't get a lot of push. And he just sort of floated back to the bag. Brantley to center field. Herrera makes the catch. And the inning is over. But the Indians string together four hits, score a couple of runs. Jason Kipnis ties the game at three. Presented by Sports Time Ohio is back and includes your first drink. So grab some friends and come on down to the ballpark. You can uh, check it out from the corner or the new drink rails in left field. District tickets are available only online at Indians.com slash district ticket. For Philadelphia here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Peter Borges will lead it off then we go to the top of the order. Trevor Bowers given up three runs on four hits, but the last two innings, he's been rock solid. He only allowed one base runner, and that was a two out walk to Cesar Hernandez on a close pitch. Yeah, he needs to be solid. One more inning right here and put a zero on the board. Your team comes right back in it, ties it up for you. A 
I think that was probably the most frustrating element of last night's game is that the Indians took that three to nothing lead in the top half of the fifth and then in the bottom of the fifth the Phillies came right back and scored three right. to tie it. Yeah that that was the frustrating thing and Kluber got the inning going with the two out double. You know but ended up having to come back out and it was it happened quickly. The veterans got him. Well Bauer walks the leadoff man. In game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers Freddie Galvez a two run homer in the first. And it was two to nothing and they made it three zip. On the pitcher Jared Eikhoff's RBI single and Jason Kipnis got the tribe going in the third with a sack fly and then tied the game with an RBI single with two outs in the fifth inning. Top of the order and Oduval Herrera. Pass ball strike to the inside corner. Started that uh, fastball inside. It had a little comeback to it. Came in and caught the corner. Herrera handles the bat well. Borges has good speed at first. In at third is a rebate. Big hack and fouled it back over the screen 0 and 2. out of play. Well, for Trevor he's at 74 pitches so he could go if uh, he can get out of this inning in relatively decent shape. One more inning. He's been able to pitch inside more than he was able to do in the first two innings. Making mistakes away, but boy, he's, he's settled down, and now he's. And it's like Trevor when he was starting. He seems as the game goes on, he gets better with the ball game, and he gets a better feel out there. Gets his command. Well, he's done a nice job tonight after spotting him two quick ones, two batters into the game. The 0 2 upstairs. Trevor Bauer, 25 years old, was the third overall pick. Five years ago by the Arizona Diamondbacks out of UCLA. And then a year later, he was part of a nine player trade that involved the Indians, the Diamondbacks, and the Cincinnati Reds. Shinsu Chu ended up in Cincinnati. Drew Stubbs ended up with the Indians. Brian Shaw and Matt Albers also ended up with the tribe. Upstairs.
Two balls, two strikes. Leadoff man aboard for Philadelphia. We should take a look at Peter Borges diving back in at first. Yeah, I find it a little strange. We know how Borges can run. You know, he has very good speed, but hasn't attempted a stolen base yet this year. But he's, he's sitting there. There you see bullpen get loose. Chamberlain and Crockett. Keeping a close eye on him. For a guy who has not stolen or attempted a stolen base yet. And again, part of that comes from the fact that Borges hasn't been on base a lot. In addition to his paltry batting average, the on base percentage not much better. Yeah. A buck 79 coming in. As the old saying goes, you can't steal first. He's only drawn one walk. Before that one right there. Well, we may see him off and running here now on a full count. You figure Herrera will put it in play. The way he can swing the bat, the eye that he has at the plate. At least in a tie game, middle part of the, I would think he'd be off and running. And as a manager, you hope he finds a hole. Runner goes. Herrera chops it over the head of Santana in the right field. Gorgeous on his way to third. He'll go in there standing. And the Phillies come right back and they've got him at the corners with nobody else. Now that makes it so much easier for the hitter up there when you, you got to hold the runner on. 3 2 count. It was a leadoff walk and he just beats down on this baseball. It hits the turf, gets over the head of Santana right in the hole. Perfectly done. It's first and third now with nobody out and a great opportunity for the Phils to come back and answer that top half of the fifth for the tribe. Terry Francona got the word from Mickey Callaway that whoever he's looking for in the bullpen is ready. And that's either Java Chamberlain or the lefty Crockett. We'll see what Terry wants to do here in terms of Galvis as he wanted to bat from the left side or the right. I would assume he'd want him to bat right, right handed. Yes. So he'll probably go. To the lefty Crockett. Ah, uh, yes. And you know what? It, it's around 80 pitches, and he said 80 to 90, depending on situations. They got him early, so it's going to be a, an early exit for Crockett. He's going to have to or for uh, Bauer. But he's going to have to work his way back. Trevor, a little disappointed as he walks off, but really, all in all, given that you know he wasn't in the rotation, he was working out of the bullpen. Bounced back from an early bump in the road, pitched well, but the, the leadoff walk so often is the undoing of a pitcher. Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen for lefty Kyle Crockett. We'll be right back. Field. 
Uh, the Indians are going to return home and they'll take on the Detroit Tigers. Uh, it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Remember, we swept them as we started this road trip. They'll have a little revenge. They're playing better. They were in Minnesota. They won today, four to one. Just go to Indians.com and get your tickets. The new pitcher is left-hander Kyle Crockett. Crockett will make just his second appearance for the Indians, and he'll be facing Freddie Galvis. And the whole reason for this is that Terry wanted to turn him around. Batting right-handed, Galvis is hitting a buck 58 compared to 238 from the other side of the plate. No homers, no RBIs, and only two extra base hits. He has six from the other side of the dish. Wow, showing bunt took a strike. Well, maybe taking all the way, but just faking bunt. Let's see if he can get any kind of movement just to make him get in the strike zone first. I don't know if this could be the only hitter that Crockett faces. He had Chamberlain up out there. You've got Franco, the big right handed hitter, next. Then the left handed hitting Ryan Howard to follow Franco. But we're only in the fifth inning. Three three ball game but Crockett falling behind here two and one. Foul into the seats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, pretty good protection there, though. <laughs> it looked like he <laughs> looked like he had his chest protector on. Hit hard to third. Aribe was going to the bag, then realized it's not a force. He throws home, and they get the tag, or do they? Yes, they do get the tag. And eventually, Peter Borges is retired for the first out in the inning. Herrera moves to second base, and Galvis at first on the fielder's choice. Well, he missed him going back, but that's the play. You want to cut off that run. You give it up, you run him back, give it up. And tag him, but he missed the tag there, but he stayed with him and he eventually got him. So now you still have first and second, and you still have the double play in order. He's out of the baseline. That's what the, the call was by the third base umpire. And so that retires Borges and Crockett a short night of work. Timeout in Philly, tied at three.
Bottom of the fifth. And Francisco Lindor. Having some fun with Juan Arebe, who never really did tag the runner, but he was called out because Borges went so far out of the baseline at third base. And with two down, or with one out now, uh, Jabba Chamberlain comes on with runners at first and second. So now there is a force at third base. Oh well, yeah, you've got a double play any way you want to go now. So that was the the right play. Get the guy in the run down. You got him out. No runners can advance after that. So it certainly stopped it from taking the lead. And now it's three and four for the Phillies. Michael Franco will lead it off or will bat here with the two on and one out. And Franco is 0 for 2 tonight. A couple of ground ball outs. But he is in a clutch spot, if you will, for Philly. Just as Jabba Chamberlain is for the Indians. In the middle of this ball game, tied at three. Middle infielders want Roberto Perez to go back over the sign, so everybody is on the same page with what they're going to try to do here. Herrera the go ahead run at second base. And Roberto blocks one on the dirt. Swung on and missed it. A good slider. And it evens the count of one and one. Ball down. And that's where you want that slider, where it starts at the knees, and by the time it ends up breaking, it's down below the strike zone. That was a good pitch. And got the swing and a miss. So he's even in the count now at one. Slider in the dirt. Three straight. And it's two and one. Another slider. He's throwing nothing. Well, but sliders. I know when he gets into when he gets into that situation, that is his pitch. That's his comfort pitch where he goes at you. He's not going to give in. That's the pitch. He doesn't want to make a mistake with the fastball. So it's been slider. Uh, all sliders to this point. We'll see. I don't see him trying to throw a fastball by him here. Didn't give in. It's a now, full count. And he's going to come back with another one. It's going to be sliders galore. Here you'll see the, the, the pitch from the high atop, and you'll see that slider had the plate. He did throw it for a strike, and he gets a swing and miss. Will it be six in a row?
No, he crossed him up with a fastball, and it's hit pretty well to deep right field. Lonnie makes the catch on the warning track, and the runners have to retreat. Two down. Okay. He, he got the. He tried to sneak the fastball by him. The only time he saw it, Bronco hit it right on the nose. Sent Jason Hall back. Boy, he got the barrel to the bat too, and Jason Hall goes back and makes the catch. Runners have to go back. It's out number two. And a big out for the tribe. And now you've got the big Ryan Howard at the plate. And he is 0 for 2 tonight. Has struck out both times up. That was against Trevor Bauer. It gets by Perez and the runners both move up so two in the scoring position for Philly now. Roberto trying to block that one but take another look. Well that, yeah that bounces he wanted to get in you see the spin and it bounces the other way so we'll see what happens here. We're going to go three guys on the right side or do you walk them. Okay. Well, the wild pitch moves him up. He went after it. And the count one and one. Is this a case where with a veteran pitcher you trust him to yes. not give in and just yes. be careful. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they've got the defensive shift. He's going to go out. He's not going to give in. He's going to throw his best pitches and get him to swing at his slider probably down in the zone like he just did. But he's not going to. And he should make a mistake. But you know you just never know. But yes. He's been around long enough. He knows what he's doing. Fastball painted the outside corner. And it's one and two. Well, he can still reach back for 95. Oh, sure he can. Don't be afraid. It's right on the outside edge. It was a great pitch. Great pitch. It's all location. Yes, it, it you is. Know, it's not the 95. If he can hit that spot right there, that's that's beautiful. With his fastball, then you get ahead of him. You can get him to chase your breaking ball. Now, Perez wants to get on the same page with his job to see what he's thinking about. Because you know he may be thinking of, uh, you know, I'm not going to throw him a strike here, and if I miss, he, he may be setting him up for a pitch down the road. First base is open. He'd love to get the out here and, and get out of the inning. That would be a job well done by the Indians bullpen if that happens. Oh, that was, oh, he's coming home and trying to score, and Perez has got him at the dish. Wow. Oduval Herrera, for let's, whatever reason, tried to take look. home on a ball that was only about five feet away from the plate. Well, let's look. It was close. His, arm, his hand got in. Let's watch it. They're coming in. Here it is. He's out. I don't, well, we'll see. That's a good look. It's from behind. The umpire's in a good spot. Howard saying get down. Where's he tag him? Let's see. See, we can't tell from there. But it looked like Perez just dove at him at, at his waist. Check his waist. No, he got him on the shoulder. I didn't think so. I thought it was watch, waist. Watch the left shoulder. Right there. He's out. Left shoulder. Well, we'll see. They're gonna they're gonna review it. They're gonna review it. They're gonna look at it. That, that's a tough call. He was called out. I don't know if there's any evidence here to overturn it, to be honest with you. But boy, what a big play in this ball game. 
if they're if if they're saying he didn't get him on the shoulder, then he's probably safe. But I think it's pretty clear we got to see he some tagged him on the shoulder because the jersey moves. If you look at that closely, the left sleeve on the jersey moves as Perez dives to apply that tag. Every angle that we see, it's just really tough to see. Watch the sleeve of the jersey move it's, on the tag. He got him, there's no question. Well, it's watch, worth a challenge. Watch for on the Philly. scoreboard. Watch the watch the jersey move as he goes for the tag. Right there. That's out. Well, I, it's it's going to be tough to overturn it. He's out. You got it. He is out. So the ruling on the field is confirmed. Roberto Perez with a great job to apply the tag on Oduvo Herrera. And the inning is over. We stay tied at three. the series tomorrow afternoon it's an odd start time Indians live begins our coverage at two first pitch at 2:30. Danny Salazar will go for the tribe Vince Velasquez going for Philadelphia that is a phenomenal pitching matchup right here on Sports Time Ohio well we go to the sixth And Santana fouls that pitch off. Took us an hour and 55 minutes to play the first five innings. That fifth inning seemed like it took forever on it both sides. A, yes, didn't it? it was. It was a long inning, and there was a lot that uh, that was packed into that one inning. Indians scored two in the top half to tie it. Phillies looked like they were going to come right back and regain the lead. They were in perfect position with their first two on. They were first and third with nobody out in the inning, and somehow. The Indians wriggled off the hook. 0 oh, 2. Nice job by Kyle Crockett and Java Chamberlain to help Trevor Bauer get out of that inning without allowing the go ahead run to score. Santana waves at a pitch outside and strikes out just the third K for Eikhoff tonight. One away here in the sixth. Juan Arebe figured prominently in the bottom half of that fifth inning. High pop, shallow right, in comes Borges. Quickly two down. Well, when you have a first and third, there's the first shot. 
So you, he wasn't going to turn the double play, so you get him in a rundown, you get that out. He's out of the baseline, and then you get the second out. He tried to sneak that heater by him, and then here's a play that he only got a few feet away. It goes to show you, if you're a base runner, and he was tagged out at home plate, that ball was, what, five, six feet away? If, if that, it goes right? 10 and you get a good jump, you, you can, can score. score. Yeah. It all comes down to once you decide to go, go. You've got to go. <laughs> right. There's no, yeah, you can't uh, hesitate. And, you know, people will say, well, you know, Howard was up there. you, you got to give him a chance to swing the bat. You don't have time to think that when you're out at third base. He felt it was going to be a way enough that he wanted to try and score, and he got caught. Make one. Tried to catch up to the fastball. It was just above the belt, close to the letters, and it's 0 2. Tyler with a single to center in the second inning, and then a triple off the wall in right center in the fifth. Yeah, he caught a low fastball there. You can see him elevating the fastball this at bat because he knows that he, Tyler's a good low ball hitter. He smoked that ball off the wall. Deep to right center field. Eight hits in his last 20 at bats. Stays upstairs with a fastball, and Tyler swings through it. A 1 2 3 6 for Jared Eikhoff, and we're still tied at three. Bottom of the fifth ended. We'll be batting now, but instead of a couple of stakes out there on the bags for him, they're empty. They're empty now. Yes, indeed. Tommy Hunter is getting loose in the Indians' bullpen. All set to make his Indians debut perhaps at some point. Java Chamberlain misses outside ball one to Ryan Howard as you take a look at Tommy Hunter getting loose. Howard swing and a miss at the slider and it's a ball and a strike. Like Andrew Bailey starting to get loose in the Philly pin. Another slider got a piece of it, one and two.
strike three called as Ryan Howard is rung up for out number one here in the sixth inning. Well, he goes right down there. Good fastball. Down and away. Got the outside corner. Good pitch. And Howard's looking. Cameron Rupp 0 for 2 has grounded out flight out. Phillies catcher pulls this one foul. Java Chamberlain came on in that fifth inning. Got a fly ball out and then Herrera retired trying to come home on a ball in the dirt. Struck out Ryan Howard now facing Rupp. And falls behind two balls in the strike. Swing and a miss to even it up. Of the 13 games Ruff has played in this year, he has hit in 11 of them. The Java Chamberlain is one of those guys that, for hitters who are aggressive, he really tests their patience. Pops him up with a high fastball. And there are two down. We mentioned it earlier. The Indians have played in nine one-run games this year. They're four and five, and that's the second most one-run games in the American League to Minnesota. Andre, uh, these guys getting used to playing all these white knucklers? They're getting used to it. But the one thing that Tito Francona mentioned is the stress level that it brings for everyone, not just him, not just you know the starting pitcher that day. He said there's a lot of guys out in the bullpen like Jabba Chamberlain, but he would like to get in some games and. And he's a man. He goes, but there's no easing in right now when every game is this close. He said he's just looking for one of those games they can get up six or seven runs and, and enjoy a couple innings for once. Well, there's only been one, and it started out in, in Detroit when they gave Kluber ten runs. That's been ba basically the only game, 50 percent or almost one run game. So. That is. The other thing is Tommy Hunter. They want to get him into a game, but he said he didn't want to put him in yesterday. But he goes because he's been a closer, he thinks he'll be okay whenever he gets him in. Yeah, you'd like to be, and that's the beauty of baseball is that I've heard this so many times, whether it's a guy coming back from injury or guys, you know, trying to work his way back after some rough outings, you try to bring him into a quote unquote safe situation, and it never works out that way. <laughs> no, yeah. no, but they're going to get tested sooner or later. Sometimes you just have to throw them into the fire, but if they've been around and he has been a closer before, I don't think you have to worry about him. No, I think and he's ready. It'll kick in. I think from a mentality standpoint, he came in breathing fire. Just outside. And, you know, I talked to Jabba about this in spring training. You know, early in his career, he was just, okay, here it is. See if you can hit it. Rare back, throw it as hard as humanly possible. His fastball's still good, but he said he enjoys this part of his career where he's got to try and pitch more and try to outthink the hitter. That's it. And pitchers don't they don't give in when you hang around his tenth his tenth year yeah. in the big leagues. I mean they don't give in. You get aggressive hitters that will get themselves out sometimes, and sometimes when you get the patient hitter hitters that have knowledge of how you're going to pitch them and, and know you a little bit, it'll backfire. But you, I mean you still have to make quality pitches to get hitters out. And he's got a good enough fastball, and he's got a very good slider. And he certainly could help the bullpen. There's the slider. I mean, it'd be one thing if he was throwing that slider at 85 and his fastball was topping out at 89. But he's still got, we've seen it, 94, 95. But as we've also seen, it's where you throw that 94, 95. Yeah, keep it on the edges. 
There's the 3 2 to Darren Ruff. Another slider, and he pulls it foul. Ruff doubled leading off the second inning and came around to score the last run of this game for Philadelphia. And a 3 2 fastball just missed the outside corner. Java wanted it, didn't get the call. And a two out walk keeps the inning alive. And now Terry Francona has a decision to make. Does he stay with Java? It looks like he will. Well, there's a fastball. It's just a little off the outside edge. You can see it. This will be a good angle. Let's see. You can see it's clearly outside. They're sitting away. He makes a close pitch, but boy, as hitters, you got it. You take that pitch, and hopefully they don't call it. Cesar Hernandez walked his last time up. Swings at the first pitch, rolls it to Kipnis. Inning over. Six complete from Philadelphia, and we're tied at three. Indians baseball is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk proud partner of the Cleveland Indians call 1-800-ELK-OHIO and by Ford built Ford tough. Seventh inning here in Philadelphia and we're tied at three the new pitcher for the Bills is Andrew Bailey. Bailey working for the third time. We saw him last night and he was something else. Yeah, for two innings, lights out, struck four out four. Yeah. yeah. He was very good. Had a good fastball, curveball. He's got the bottom third of the Indians' order. Phillies bullpen, six scoreless innings last night. Just inside. Roberto Perez drove in his first run of the year with a sack fly in the fifth. Up and in. West National League East is some division all of a sudden. 
The Washington Nationals have won back to back games. The Mets have won eight in a row. The Miami Marlins have won seven straight and now Philadelphia. Tied with the tribe here but they're looking for their fifth consecutive victory. Hit hard to third backhanded by Franco. And a high feed but the big man Howard yeah. able to grab it. Time for an in game update. Here's Al Pulaski. Matt Latos yes, trying to stay was. perfect on the yeah. year for Chicago. He was 4 0 going into that start. Yes. Lonnie Chisinau, big bouncer to Ryan Howard. Nice quick flip, two down. By the way, Miami, it's not a final. They're up 7 1 on Milwaukee, but they're well on their way to their seventh straight win in this Eastern Division. But that's got to be, it's, it's kind of, on one hand, I suppose. There's some pride within the division to say, hey, this is a pretty good division. There's also some anxiety to say, man, somebody's got to lose so we can gain some ground in this thing. Yeah, that's way too early for that. They'll, they'll get into it. They start getting into division games. I mean, Atlanta, poor Atlanta, they're already double digit games out of first place before the end of the first month of the season. Well, the good news, they got postponed today. <laughs> Here's Marlon Bird popping one up. That's Gallo's humor. <laughs> well, there you go. You see a couple of teams up top. The Nats, the Mets, Philly, three games behind them. Miami back to 500 at four and a half back. And then Atlanta, it's going to be a long year for them. Would they go 15 games without a home run? Yeah. There's Marlon Bird sending a high fly to right, and the former Philly is retired to end the seventh. Indians go in a hurry again. That's seven straight retired by Philly's pitching. Stretch time in Philadelphia. And Tommy Hunter will make his Cleveland Indians debut tonight. Hunter spent last year with Baltimore and Chicago in the National League. And had some off-season surgery, a pair of uh, surgeries actually. 
to repair a core muscle injury that he had with Chicago. And so he went to camp with everyone knowing he wasn't going to make the club out of spring training because of the just the overall health issue. And it was just a matter of how long it was going to take for him to get ready. And here he is. A couple months shy of his 30th birthday. Two years ago, he had 11 saves for the Orioles. David Lowe pinch hitting for Philadelphia. Fly ball shallow center. Naquin got a late break and he'll play it on a bounce. And David Lowe will board to start. Well, there you go. It's off the end of the bat and you turn sideways and he broke that half step back before he comes in. Not to say he would have caught it, but he might have had a chance at it. You never know. Peter Borges has struck out and walked on the night. Well, we should see a bunt here. He squares, bunts it, and Tommy Hunter with the long flip to Kip. One away as David Lowe moves into scoring position on the sacrifice. Hey fans, if you can't watch the games on TV, all you can do, all you have to do, is stream them live on your mobile device. Just go to the App Store, download the free. Fox Sports go out, log in, stream the Indians wherever you go. Three three ball game. We are in the bottom of the seventh. Oduval Herrera, two hits, two singles. He has scored a run. But it was Herrera who was cut down at the plate to end. The fifth inning that right now looms large. If he's safe, the Phillies would have had the lead. Pop to left. Brantley has it measured. And there are two down. Yeah, this ball does not get away from Perez very far, and he kept coming. See it in the dirt. He was going to hold him up, and he tried to slide around him. And Perez gets him. He knew he had him. They challenged the play, but the call remained. He was out, and you can see right on the shoulder. He tags him. You could see Ryan Howard initially putting his one hand up as yeah, if to, to say stop. stop, and Herrera just he had already made up his mind to go. Yeah. And here is Freddie Galvis, two-run homer in the first. Got in on him down the line. This could be tough. It drops a base hit, and the Phillies take the lead. How do you like that? Galvis sounded like he broke his bat, but it was perfectly placed just inside the chalk. And with two outs, David Lowe easily scores. It and did. It got down on the trademark. It breaks the bat in a couple of bloops, and they score. See, Lonnie couldn't get over there. It bounces. And they will take the lead here in the bottom half of the seventh. Four three Philadelphia. And Mikel Franco 0 for 3. 
And he pops it up. Foul ground. Uribe gives it a look. He's got it. He makes the catch over the railing. And that will end the inning. But not before the Phillies get a broken bat bloop that falls in right field. And they now have the lead four to three. United Telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Well, it's 4-3 now in favor of Philadelphia. Another look as Juan Uribe got to the railing. Made the catch. There was nobody there to really help him, and then Mike Napoli came in late. <laughs> he said, I knew you had it, Poppy. Knew you had it all the way. So, the new pitcher for Philadelphia is left hander Elvis Araujo. He also pitched in last night's game, two thirds of an inning. Top of the order for Cleveland here in the eighth inning. Jason Kipnis has driven in two runs on the night. A sack fly in the third and a two out RBI hit in the fifth inning. Checks on the ball down low. Strike to the outside corner. It's another slider. Hopped into foul territory. And it's the shortstop Galvis who had the best chance at it, but yeah, he couldn't get there. It looked like Franco. You know, sort of gave up on it because he was coming behind him. I don't think either one of them could have caught it. See, they're talking about it right now. The shortstop usually has the better angle. Franco's going out. He thinks he may have it, but then all of a sudden he gives up on it. I don't know. He couldn't have caught it. That's just it. Right in the right spot. It gives Kipnis another chance. And he went fishing, strikes him out one away. Yeah. 
Tomorrow NASCAR it's the big one at Talladega Geico 500 with Dale, Hart, Dale Earnhardt Jr. will try to defend his title from a year ago. Coverage begins at 12:30 Eastern on your local Fox station, or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Here's Francisco Lindor, one out of three on the night. Down the right side into the seats it goes. Right back out of play. And a base hit in the right field. Boy, it's a, and he did it on an off speed pitch. Good on Andre. Well, to both of you guys, as you look at Francisco Lindor, are we watching him mature and becoming a better hitter than maybe he was in the minors by learning how to expand in the zone? I mean, he, he's swinging that balls outside of the zone on this trip, and he's gotten some big hits on pitches low and high. He just told me he feels like he's more comfortable at the plate, and he believes in himself. It's, it's just a matter of getting to know the personnel and knowing what you can do. I've seen a number of times on this trip he's taken an off speed or a breaking ball hit and hit it the other way both left handed and right handed so yes you are maturing as a hitter when you can do that. See that's what he tried to do last night in the situation he was facing the same guy when he hit into that double play he's trying to go into the hole but it was a fastball last night and he hit it right at the second baseman when they turned that double play in the eight. Michael Brantley tied up with a good pitch inside. Well, the Phillies have their bullpen ready if needed. The Indians have a pair. Two quick strikes. I mean, you watch Elvis Araujo pitch, and there's a lot to like. He, his size, for one thing, at six foot seven, 275 pounds. Left-hander, it's got some power, got some slurvy action, and I suppose for Indians fans, you, you just wonder what could have been. He was originally in the Indians organization. They signed him when he was just a kid out of Venezuela. At Tommy John surgery early in his professional career, but the Indians cut him loose after the 2014 season, or somewhere during that 2014 season, and that's when the Phillies jumped on him. They signed him, and now all of a sudden he's in the big leagues and looking pretty stout here at the outset. The 0 2. No, quick snap throw oh, to first. That was borderline, wasn't it? Yeah, but if that's three in a row with one out, an 0 2 count, they're telling them to throw over there. I don't think that, it, you know, they're going to steal in this situation, even though Brantley's down two, unless they really have something on his move. And their pitching coach, Bob McClure, if he works with lefties, he had one of the best pickoff moves around. And his, there he goes. They knew something. Pitch was up and in, and the throw, not in time. Lindor steals it. And for Francisco Lindor, his fourth stolen base on the year. And that's one when it counts, Matty. You take off on an 0 2 pitch after they just threw over three straight times. The throw from Rupp was on the opposite side of the base. If it's on the money, they may have a chance. They made it close, but it's a big steal for Lindor. 
My guess is they had something on them. Sure they do. And that's why they continued to throw over there. Now the infield will talk. You know, he may have that high leg kick being six foot seven. Yeah. You know, Alomar, Sandy over there at first base. They know. They have the times. They got a chance to see him last night. So it doesn't take long for you to, to, to pick someone up, and Lindor was able to steal at 02. So now we'll see if Brantley can bring him home. He hits on high in the air, left center. Over there is Herrera, and he makes the catch. And Lindor has to hold two down. Carlos Santana the batter. Yeah, it looks like is this McCannon or is this Bob no, McClure? No, that's McClure going out there. Well, so they know they're he's just going to go over how they want to pitch him in this at bat or do they want to pitch to him? Well that's what I'm saying they'll have a, a game plan of, of going about how they're going to try to get him out if they do and if you walk him, then they have a right hander ready for Uribe who's on deck. Murray's up in the bullpen and he's loose he's ready to go. Yeah, Colton Murray's the guy they just called up today when they put Inohosa on the DL. Dalier Inohosa. We uh, were told before last night's game that. They were going to try to stay away from him, and then news came out today that they put him on the DL, so Colton Murray called up. Well, let's see what happens here. Santana, they, they've held him hitless so far tonight. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Santana oh, takes any time, boy. They came right on a high fastball. One ball, one strike. Stairs with it, two and one. He hasn't messed around. Everything has been hard, all fastballs. Whew. And he stays with the heater. Got a piece of it, but right into the glove, just barely a piece. Now, it's a two two count. In the dirt. First breaking ball. First breaking ball tried to get him to swing over that back foot slider. Missed down and in. It's a full count. You know, last year at his first. Time in the big leagues. He had a streak where he went 38 consecutive batters without allowing a hit. So Araujo has some wipeout stuff when he's on. The 3 2 outside and a walk to Santana. Keeps the inning alive for Juan Arebe. And he will be gone because they're going for a double switch here as they did last night late in the ball game. He's going to tell the manager, all right, we'll send in another. Is it Blanco again coming into the infield? It sure is at second base. He'll hit the pitcher spot. 
And they'll bring in Murray. So we've got a timeout here in Philadelphia. New pitcher Colton Murray coming on when we come back. Where the Indians have two on and two out down a run here in the eighth inning and the new Philadelphia pitcher is right hander Colton Murray. And he'll be facing Juan Arebe in a key spot here in the ballgame. Andres Blanco comes into the ballgame. He takes over at shortstop for Freddie Galvis. So the pitcher Murray goes into the number two spot in the batting order and Andres Blanco will go into the eighth spot which had been the pitcher's spot got in the batting order. And here is a rebay 0 for 3 on the night. Colton Murray 25 years old out of Overland Park Kansas. Yeah, they get your use a two out base hit here. And Aribe takes a strike. Nice breaking ball. Get ahead. Watching him warm up. It looked like he had the low fastball, breaking ball, and a changeup. That got away. Crossed up the catcher. He sure did. Goes to the backstop, and the Indians have two in scoring position that now. That looked like a pretty good pitch. He was looking for the breaking ball, and he got the fastball. That looked like a good pitch, but he didn't call it because he crossed him up. Hit him on the wrist or maybe it on the sure, forearm. No, that hurt. That was a strike call the ball because of the cross up, and he was looking breaking ball, and you got a fastball that exploded. That's a pass ball, but my guess is that's the pitcher's mistake. Sure it is. Just based on the body language and look the facial expression. Just called up today. <laughs> They're going over the signs again. Said, "Hey, look, I said second sign. <laughs> Watch this. He's looking for that breaking ball down and away again. And it, you see how he turned his glove the other way. He didn't have time. You can't react to the fastball when you're looking for the breaking ball. I think it was called a ball, so it looks like it's one and one." But both runners move up a base hit now gives the Indians a lead. And Juan Arebe awaits the 1 1 pitch. Breaking ball hit high in the air. Deep left center field. Herrera back. He's on the track and makes the catch right in front of the wall to end the inning. Oh, Juan Arebe gave it a ride, but it died right at the 387 foot mark. And the inning is over.
on to pitch for the Indians and try to keep it a one run game. Boy, the Indians came oh so close. Taking the lead on a rebate. Hit one to the bigger part of the yard. And it died on the warning track, so we look forward to Ryan Howard, Cameron Ruff, and Darren Ruff against Otero here in the home half of the eighth. Boy, Milwaukee's come back to make a little bit of a game of it against Miami. Marlins lead 7 5 in the eighth. It was 7 to 1, Miami. A strike call to Ryan Howard. Francisco Lindor will throw out Ryan Howard one away. Looking back at our keys to the game, courtesy of Mazda. Cut down on the strikeouts. Well, the Indians, uh, they haven't swung and missed a lot tonight. But just not a ton of offensive opportunities generated. And uh, for Trevor Bauer, location was uh, an issue a couple of times tonight. Early in the game. But overall, you know, the numbers might not be all that spectacular to look at. But I thought he pitched well. First start of the year, transitioning out of the bullpen. I know he'd love to have that fifth inning leadoff walk back. That that was sort of his undoing in that inning. Yeah, but they ended up not. Uh, they didn't get a they run. Didn't score. That, yeah. But that precipitated his. Yes, it did. Exit rather quickly. Cameron Rupp is grounded out, flied out, popped up. This guy's a pretty good hitter. Checked on a ball low, three and one. Jedmar Gomez, the one time Cleveland Indian. And now the Phillies closer. Strike to the outside corner and good pitch by Otero. Didn't want to give in and just groove one there, but he was able to find the outside corner. Payoff pitch, swung on and missed. Otero good strikes sinker. him out. Yeah, two he's down. got a great sinker. He, when, it, when his game is on, he's got a very good sinker, man. You watch this ball disappear, you'll either beat it into the ground, it's just late movement, and that's the key right there. Keep it down, start it at the knees, and just let the ball take its natural movement. Good pitch, a ground ball, and a strikeout. So here's Darren Ruff, who has doubled, scored, and also walked tonight. Chops this one to third, a rebay, flips it over, and we'll go to the ninth with the Indians down a run.
to take some hacks at. First it was Elvis Arajo who was able to get out of an inning with two thirds scoreless. Did give up a hit, blocked one, struck out one. But now it's Jenmar Gomez. Arajo only pitched in the Indians minor league organization. Jenmar Gomez made it to the big leagues. And, you know, I think there was some there were some times where you thought this guy had a chance to be a you know, pretty yeah. good starting pitcher. But for whatever reasons, never really worked out. And he was basically just. You now they traded him to Pittsburgh for Quincy Lattimore. After the 2012 season, he pitched a couple of years with the Pirates, and the you know last year with the Phillies, 65 games out of the bullpen at a 3.01 ERA. It's not like they went into the season saying, "Well, Jenmar Gomez is our closer," but no. they started looking around and say, "Well, well, how about you?" Yeah, okay. they they lost their first four games, and they were looking for a closer, and uh, their manager says, "Well, I'm just going to put Gomez in there." And I'll tell you what, he's he's been up for the. For the occasion, every time he's been out there, he's done a nice job for him. Yeah, I can remember his first major league win. Seven saves, seven opportunities. Get that first man aboard. See Ramirez is on deck for the Indians. No balls and a strike. Tyler Naquin takes aim. And a ground ball for the second baseman Hernandez. One away. Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Tyler Naquin, one of the few Indians that's had it going offensively tonight. Solid line drive base hit up the gut the first time up, and then this triple almost got out of here. Yeah, two more hits again for Tyler. Jose Ramirez will bat for Roberto Perez. Jen Margomez with the first pitch strike. Way outside, one and one. Strike Ramirez doesn't like it, but he's in the hole now. One and two. Well, they've done a tremendous job out of that bullpen so far in the first two games. Eight and a third innings, just two hits, 12 strikeouts. That one got away. Base is empty in the ninth. And the 2 2 is down and in. Full count. Jenmar Gomez, a oh, long look in. Now he's ready. The 3 2 to Ramirez is hit right back up the middle and through. And how about Jose Ramirez with a pinch hit single here in the ninth inning? And the Indians have the tying run aboard. There you go. It was a good at bat by Ramirez. He stayed on that sinker, took it right back up the middle, did not pull off. That ball was off the plate. 
Takes it right back up the middle, and there's your tying run. And now Chisenhall to the plate. And Jan Gomes to the on deck circle. Right now, Lonnie Chisinau, two for three on the night. He doubled down the left field line, had an infield single in the fifth. And it gets away from Howard, but not far enough for Ramirez to go anywhere. Phillies faithful will tell you that Ryan Howard is a little below average defensively at first base. Stairs 1 0. If the Indians fail to rally here, this would be their fifth consecutive one run game. That smashed over the head of the shortstop Galvis. And Ramirez will have to stop at second base. But the Indians have back to back singles with one out in the ninth inning. Really nice and swing there. Looks by like Chisinau. Jan Gomes is being called back. And it will be Rajay Davis a who nice will be coming right up. Right there. Chisenhall drives it over the head of shortstop. Blanco into left center field. He stayed on that baseball, hit it well. So now they have two runners on. Why the change in pinch hitters? I'm thinking here? because Davis has been better with runners in scoring position than Gomes has been, and uh, you know he was going to take the shot for maybe a long ball with Gomes if uh, Lonnie doesn't get on base. So we'll see what happens. That's that's my guess. So Rajay, who's riding a 10-game hitting streak, will bat here. He's hitting 385 with runners in scoring position, and you look down and. Uh, Jan Gomes is hitting 357. But this guy's been hot, so we'll see. So two on with one out. Kipnis on deck as Davis takes aim against Gomez. Tougher guy to double up to on the ground. And there is nobody warming up in that Philly bullpen. Tying run, Jose Ramirez at second base. Chisinau go ahead run at first. And it's in the dirt. Picked nicely by the catcher, Rupp, or otherwise the Indians would have had two in scoring position. Yeah, did a really nice job. He almost just throws that hand instead of the backhand. He tried to get that body out, but keeps it in front of him. That is a very big play there with no, with one out. If they move up, then you're in. Big business now. Here is the one one. And a ground ball towards short. Galvis goes to second. There's one. No throw to first. So the tying run is 90 feet away. But now there are two down in the inning. Yeah, I didn't think so. You're not going to turn it with Davis going down the line. He hit the ball right at Blanco at short. They turn it, and he wasn't going to try to make that throw wisely. So that gives uh, Kim an opportunity with two outs. Maybe it's with first and third. Well, Jason Kipnis. Now a base hit in the fifth inning with two outs to drive in a run. In fact, that tied the game at three in the fifth. Don't be surprised if you see Davis taking off because Gomez, I don't think, is that fast to home plate. He had the big leg kick and he could put some pressure on it. I don't think they're going to want to throw through here. So don't be surprised to see him take off early. 
takes low ball one. The other thing you wonder about is when you've been sitting on the bench all night, how how fresh do the legs feel? He's been stretching. I, I understand. It's a tough thing to do when you're if you're asked to steal a base, but he knows what he's doing. Getting this taking a called strike on the inside corner, and it's one and one. They may Still no move by Davis. No, they may want to give him that hole for a strike or two for Kipnis. But he throws this one was inside. They wanted to tie him up in. Where you'll see it's a strike down and in. He likes to throw that sinker down and away, and Kip might have been looking for it out over the plate. That's outside. And it's two balls and a strike. Tying run at third base, Jose Ramirez. There's the go ahead run, Rajay Davis at first. And he draws a throw. Well, with the 2 1 count, it's a good time to, to take off. He pretty much wants to throw a strike here, and if, if Kip likes it, he doesn't want to go fall behind 3 and 1. Another throw over to first base. the tying run Kipnis awaiting the 2 1 pitch from Jenmar Gomez there goes Davis swing and a miss Call that off. oh I guess he did no no oh. yeah, 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 yeah. boy Davis was walking back he was walking back to first Boy, it's a good thing. They were yelling at third base. That's going to go as a stolen base. He followed off and he caught it behind home plate, so it's in play. Well, the Indians are down to their last strike, but now, thanks to the stolen base, a base hit here by Kipnis would give the Indians the, the lead. Two two, hammered the right field. Back goes Borges, and makes the catch to end the game. Wow! The Phillies hang on by the skin of their teeth on a terrific play in deep right field by Peter Borges, and the Indians fall just short once again. Five straight one-run games they have played. And unfortunately, they have come out on the wrong side of four of those five decisions. Oh, he had a, he, he, you can't do anything much more. He had a pitch to hit. He, he drove it to right field. Borg is going back. He's got to jump at the end. And unfortunately, that's the third out of the inning and the ball game. So another one run game. And he, you're right, hangs on by the skin of his teeth. So the Phillies have won five in a row, eight out of nine, and they are 14 and 10 on the year. The Indians are now even at four and four on this nine game road trip with one more to play as they fall below 500 at 10 and 11 on the year. Four three is the final in Philly. We'll have a final word when we come back. <laughs> 